It's no secret that A-list actors can get a little bit overeager with their on-set requests. Some demand millions of dollars in expenses, others a very specific selection of on-set cuisine, but there are some actors who have had some very weirdly specific demands before agreeing to do their work. Now, none of these details drastically altered their respective movie, plot, or character in any major way, but they clearly meant something to the actor all the same. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 tiny details actors requested for movies. Number 10. Ben Affleck requested not to wear a Yankees baseball cap in Gone Girl. As much as David Fincher might be an exacting director who often demands dozens of takes from his actors, he came into conflict with Ben Affleck while shooting Gone Girl for a wholly more petty reason. The scene in question called for Affleck's character to wear a New York Yankees hat while attempting to maintain a low profile at an airport. Affleck, though, a die-hard fan of the Boston Red Sox, a team which has a historic rivalry with the Yankees, just flat out refused, requesting that he wear any other hat instead. Of the incident, Affleck commented, quote, I said, David, I love you. I would do anything for you, but I will not wear a Yankees hat. I just can't. I can't wear it because it's going to become a thing, David. I will never hear the end of it. I can't do it, and I couldn't put it on my head, end quote. According to Fincher on the movie's home video commentary, production was shut down for four days while he and Affleck hashed out the disagreement, though he might have just been joking on that. Either way, Affleck got what he wanted, and to be fair, he was kind of right as well. With the amount of stick that he gets in the press, he wouldn't have heard the end of this from the tabloids. Number 9. Sam Neill requested an Aboriginal Australian flag on his uniform, Event Horizon. For his role as Dr. William Weir in cult sci-fi horror film Event Horizon, Sam Neill made a small yet frankly ingenious costume recommendation to director Paul W.S. Anderson. With the Doctor being an Australian, the character wore a patch on his uniform bearing the country's flag, though Neil asked that the flag receive a futuristic alteration, replacing the Union Jack in the top left corner with that of an Aboriginal flag. Neil felt that this was the way that the flag should look by the year 2047, renouncing the country's colonial ties while paying tribute to those who first made Australia their home. Now we'll have to wait to see whether or not Neil's look towards the future comes to fruition, but it sure is a neat character flourish either way. Number 8. Bryce Dallas Howard requested high heels for just one scene. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. No matter what you thought of the first Jurassic World, you'll likely remember all the controversy surrounding the footwear choice of Bryce Dallas Howard's Claire, who spends the movie fleeing from bloodthirsty dinosaurs in freaking high heels. Like, fair news, that's, that's pretty badass, you know? Still, it was a decision which received plenty of flack from fans, and so for the sequel Fallen Kingdom, the decision was made to show Claire changing her heels into some more practical boots early on. But one to never give in, Howard insisted that that the film featured just a single scene with Claire back in the heels, logically opting for the early scene in which Claire is shown arriving at her office. Of the moment, Howard said, quote, in the first scene, I'm wearing high heels, and it was written like Claire's wearing sneakers, like specifically Claire's wearing sneakers. And I just circled that when I was reading it, and I was like, no, 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 it's an office, Claire would wear heels, end quote. Number seven. Robert De Niro refused to use money on camera unless it was real. Goodfellas. Robert De Niro has a reputation of being a bit of a grump on movie sets, but this one specific demand he made while making Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas is a prime example of an actor just being a little bit difficult. Playing a veteran gangster, he and his fellow cast members handle plenty of cash across the movie, living up to their explosive lifestyle, pulling heists, and of course, tipping Dorman. However, De Niro decided that the prop cash used in the movie just wasn't for him. It was too fake, so he insisted on using real money in every scene he handled cash in. Instead of driving down to the bank and getting some of his own out for the scenes though, you know, considering this is very much a him problem as the use of real cash on sets isn't usually allowed, it was the prop master who had to give him 5,000 real dollars for him to carry around in his scenes. Telling the story to GQ, he said, quote, the only guy who uses real money in the movie is De Niro. He had like $5,000 cash in his pocket. I went to the bank and took out a couple thousand dollars of my own, but you had to keep track of it. Like the scene in the casino, he's throwing $50 and $20 bills around, and as soon as they cut, we're all trying to get them back like everyone freeze. Number 6. 
Matt Damon requested his cowboy hat to have a belt buckle spelling the letter B. True grit. Not one to be outdone by his pal Ben Affleck, Matt Damon also made a baseball related wardrobe request on the set of the Coen Brothers' western remake True Grit. Damon, who played a Texas Ranger in the film, made arrangements for the belt buckle on his cowboy hat to resemble the letter B, in tribute to his favourite baseball team, the Boston Red Sox. Given that the Red Sox' baseball cap bears the same letter B prominently on the front, it's a pretty direct tribute albeit ingeniously slipped into such a card-carrying period movie. Damon reportedly tries to include references to the Red Sox in as many of his movies as possible, but he'll struggle to top this level of inspired sneakery. At the very least, I bet he made old Ben proud. Number 5. Roy Scheider requested to wear his police badge on his left, Jaws. Though it's often cited as a goof that Jaws' police chief protagonist, Martin Brewery, wears his police badge on the wrong side of his uniform, this is actually no mistake at all. Indeed, police in reality traditionally wear the shield on their left side, intended to cover their heart, but Brewery instead wore his on the right side of his shirt. In an interview with Empire Magazine, the film's co-writer confirmed that this switcheroo was not a mistake, but instead the actual suggestion of star Roy Scheider himself. He said, quote, all cops wear their badge on the left. Roy insisted on it, so I asked him, why are you doing that? He said, I want the audience to think this guy is complicated. This subconsciously throws the audience off balance. It was great to have an audience's interest piqued by this little wardrobe tweak. I always thought that was an amazing choice, end quote. Given that Brody is effectively the film's single example of forward-thinking authority, it does make sense that he isn't cut from quite the same button-down cloth as his fellow servicemen, whether you noticed it or not. Number 4. Anakin Noni Rose requested Princess Tiana be left-handed like herself, The Princess and the Frog. The Princess and the Frog is surely one of the most underappreciated films in Disney's back catalogue, a vibrant and refreshingly diverse spin on the typical Disney princess formula. Singer-actress Anakin Noni Rose provided the voice for teenage protagonist Tiana, and some fans eventually noticed that Tiana is one of only two Disney princesses, the other being Mulan, to be left-handed. And this was actually a request from none other than Rose herself, who being left-handed felt that translating her own left-handedness into the character would represent her all the more accurately on screen. Ultimately, the anime is not only agreed, but also included Annika's own facial dimples in the final design as well. Number 3. Henry Cavill requested to keep his hairy chest. Man of Steel. Of the myriad divisive things about Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, many Superman fans took umbrage with the superhero showing off a distinctly hairy chest during the oil rig rescue sequence. This though was actually a request from Henry Cavill himself, who when asked to shave his chiseled bod, fired back with a comic reference to state his case for keeping Supes' hairy chest. He said, quote, it's something that I wanted because in the comic book The Death of Superman, there's this bit where his costume's ripped and he's making the ultimate sacrifice and he's got his hairy chest and I was like, okay, why is the perception that because he's muscly, he must have no body hair? And I thought, why can't we just do that like in the comic books? So we did. So there, haters be damned. It ensured that Cavill's stocky beefcake Superman had a look quite unlike any other live action iteration of the DC icon. Number two. Samuel L. Jackson requested a purple lightsaber, the Star Wars prequels. Probably the most unique and memorable aspect of Mace Windu as a character is that he commands a purple lightsaber, a flourish which Samuel L. Jackson himself suggested to George Lucas. In addition to Jackson's clear fondness for purple in real life, given how often it figures into the wardrobes of his movie characters, he also wanted to make sure that he stood out in the movie's action scenes amid a sea of robed warriors. And as the saying goes, shy bands get out, and though Lucas was initially a bit hesitant, he eventually acquiesced and allowed Jackson to wield a purple lightsaber during reshoots. While the trilogy sadly never quite capitalised on Jackson's sheer badassery, the purple saber sure was a neat look for the character and true to Jackson's hopes, did help Mace Windu stand out from his Jedi brethren. Number 1. Steve McQueen requested 12 extra lines of dialogue to match Paul Newman, the towering inferno. And finally, this request wasn't some quirky wardrobe ask, but a minor tweak related to dialogue allocation of all things. 1974's Oscar-winning disaster film The Towering Inferno boasted a terrific ensemble cast, led by the inimitable pairing of Paul Newman and Steve McQueen. However, after signing on, McQueen had a few requests to ensure that he received equal treatment compared to co-star Newman. In addition to seeking and receiving the same salary, McQueen also asked that they receive equally prominent billing on the movie's posters and, better still, requested that his lines of dialogue numbered exactly the same as Newman. And so, this led to McQueen reportedly reading the movie's script 
script and counting the lines for both himself and Newman, after which he asked the screenwriter to pen an extra 12 lines of dialogue for himself, which he duly did. Igor jostling aside, everything clearly worked out for the best here, given the film's enormous critical and commercial success. 